Hello and welcome to Expo's Be an Expert training program on the resistive fault location functionalities of the Max Tester 635. The resistive fault location, or RFL test for short, is used to help technicians locate resistive or battery cross faults on a pair. The theory behind fault location is actually quite simple. The difficult part is ensuring that the tester is connected properly and that we've properly strapped the line at the far end, according to the diagrams. The tester is going to measure the series resistance of a pair, it will then take that resistance and assign half the total resistance to each leg. The unit will then apply a voltage to the reference lead and measure the current on both sides. Because there's a fault on one leg, the current test will not be equal. The ratio between one leg to the other is used to determine where along the cable your fault is located. There are two flavors of RFL tests, single pair and separate good pair. The single pair test is used when you have either one good leg to use as reference, so a simple case where you have a ring ground but your tip is okay, or in cases where both sides of your pair are faulted, another good pair in the same bundle going the exact same distance can be used. The separate good pair test is used when you have no reference pair in your entire bundle. So cases where a cable is completely damaged, you'll need to run a temporary cable between your terminals and use this temporary run as your good wires. Putting this into practice, we'll take a 100 ohm resistor and place it from the ring to ground in the center of a 1000 foot cable. We now go to the far end of the cable and place what the max tester calls a strap. It's simply just placing a full short between the good and the bad wire. Opposite from the strap, we'll be connecting our max tester, ensuring to follow the diagram exactly as is displayed on the screen. So for this test case, the black lead will be connected to the tip as it's the good wire, and the red lead will be connected to the ring as it's the faulted wire. And because our fault is to ground, we'll connect the reference lead to ground. The next step is to simply run the test. The tester will now run its test and display the found result. We can see on our screen a couple of acronyms. DTS, or distance to strap. This is telling us the distance from our tester to where you've placed the strap. DTF, or distance to fault. This tells us how far the fault is from our tester. DFTS, distance from fault to strap, gives us the distance from our strap back to the fault. And then of course fault. This is actually giving us information on the actual fault. So in our test case, the same 100 ohms. The technician would now either look into his cable maps to locate the closest terminal to the 500 foot fault location, or in the case of a buried cable between two terminals, locate the cable, follow it 500 feet, and dig down to find the fault. We'll now use the same scenario for a separate good pair test. We place a 100 ohm short in the center of a 1000 foot cable, only this time we'll use a separate 1000 foot cable pair as our reference. After the test is run, our result screen looks very similar as our single pair test. Distance to fault, distance to strap, distance from fault to strap, and our fault are all displayed clearly. For more advanced cases where your cable has a gauge change in the middle of your section, or you happen to know the exact distance of your span, the cable setup button at the top of the screen will allow you to enter this information. The unit will still be fairly accurate with nothing inputted, however if absolute accuracy is a must, like in cases where you would need to dig up a street or sensitive area, any extra information you can enter in the unit will make the result that much more accurate. 